Are you eager to gain practical hands-on experience in cybersecurity? Looking to add impactful projects to your resume or simply keen on learning new aspects of cyber? You're in the right place. In this video series, we're diving deep into deploying next generation firewalls in the cloud. We'll start off by setting up a robust firewall system in Azure, configuring it to manage traffic for our virtual machines. You'll learn how to implement firewall rules and use intrusion prevention system and ideas in the cloud. On top of that, we'll expose two virtual machines to the internet and use our next generation firewalls as a shield against cyber threats. In addition to that, we'll generate brute force attacks on these machines and see our firewall in action, detecting and halting these threats in real time. And there's even more. We'll funnel all the firewall logs to Microsoft Sentinel, setting up alerts and generating incident tickets, just like any other typical SOC environment. This is hands-on learning at its best. By the end of this series, you'll have wealth of knowledge and experience to discuss in your job interview. Add to your resume and apply in real-world scenarios. But before we get into the training, I'm not here to sell you anything like courses or things like that. This training is all about sharing knowledge and practical skills. If you find value in this video, the best way you can thank me is by sharing it with your friends or colleagues on social media, like LinkedIn, YouTube. So go ahead and like this video right now and consider subscribing to my channel. Your support means the world to me. And remember, by spreading the word, you're not only helping me, but helping other people who are in the same situation like yours, who are looking to gain practical hands-on experience in cybersecurity. Together, we can make this valuable information accessible to everyone. So let's get started. All right, guys, here's what you will learn in this lab. First of all, we're going to learn about resource creation in Azure. We'll cover the fundamentals of setting up essential Azure components like virtual networks, virtual machines, and networking features, okay? After that, we're going to deploy and configure a next generation firewall. In this case, the firewall is a Fortinet firewall, FortiGate VM. We're going to learn how to effectively deploy a FortiGate firewall, how to set up the rules there, and also implementing intrusion prevention systems, IPS, for enhanced security. After that, we're going to expose some virtual machines to the internet, okay? And I'm going to personally generate some brute force attacks to these machines, and we're going to check the logs on the firewall and also put some rules in the firewall to stop these attacks from happening. As a result of that, the firewall is going to generate some logs for us. So the whole objective is to ingest all those logs that are generated by the firewall to Microsoft Sentinel. Microsoft Sentinel is a popular SIEM tool, uh, which is available in Azure environment. This, this tool has been widely used in the industry. It's well known. A lot of people who are using Splunk are moving away from Splunk and moving to Sentinel because it's cheaper. It's very uh, scalable, faster, easier to manage and configure, specifically in Australia, that's happening these days. So we're going to learn about all of that, how to connect Firewall to Sentinel and how to send all the logs to Sentinel for analysis and all of that. And finally, we're going to cr create uh, alerts, conducting incident response. And the whole objective here is to ensure that the cloud network that we've created earlier is secure and um, well protected. So, however, there are some requirements th th that are needed for this lab. The first one is that you have to have the access to the internet and to be able to use your browser to access Microsoft Azure portal. The next one is that you have to have a credit or debit card for account creation. If you have if this is the first time that you're creating your account in Azure, you're going to get $200 free credit, which is great. You're going to use that, but I'm not too sure, but I think if you want to deploy that firewall in Azure, you have to change your subscription from free trial to pay as you go. And if you do that, the firewall, Fortinet firewall is going to give you 30 days free trial so you're not going to pull like pay any money during the 30 days of using the firewall in cloud however i urge you guys to check the cost in your subscription i want you to manage and monitor your subscription costs because i don't want you guys 
to end up with the big bills at the end of the month. But regardless, you're not going to incur a lot of costs here in this lab. If your free credit is not like uh, is not being used, you're going to only pay a few dollars, like even less than a coffee or a sandwich or a meal that you have. So don't worry about the cost. It's not going to be that much, but monitor it effectively every day, okay? And I want you to make sure that all the VMs, all the resources are turned off when you are done with this lab. Don't do this mistake like any uh, like other people. They start this lab, they leave everything turned on, and it happens they leave it for one week. They want to continue working on the lab the next week. But the bad part is all these days that these machines were on, you had incurred a lot of cost, which is not great. So don't do that. Make sure that the machines are turned off after you do this lab and training, okay? So uh, one thing that is really key here that I need to mention is that you have to have a fundamental understanding of networking concepts. If you don't, this is not the training for you right now. Go back to your studies. Make sure that you have uh, covered the foundation of networking, submitting, public IP, private IP addresses, NAT, all the basics of networking, TCP IP, how routing works. If you don't know these topics, definitely this training is not the right thing for you. You have to go back to your tr studies and make sure that you nail uh, those concepts in a good way. After you do that, definitely come back here and continue this training. It's also good to have a basic knowledge of cloud computing, specifically in this video training, Azure. But if you don't, that's completely okay. We are not going to go very deep into the details of cloud itself, uh, but it's good to have. Overall, it's going to add a lot of, um, it's good to have cloud computing knowledge on your resume. All right. Now, the way uh, the, the network is structured in this lab, it's like this. I actually draw this uh, diagram a few hours ago. It's not really beautiful, clean, or good looking. So apologize for that. Um, but basically what we have here, the top one, the cloud one is the internet itself. We have the public network. In this case, it's Azure network. All the resources and machines, the firewalls and all of that are under this subnet, 10.10.0.0 slash 16. This is the summarized subnet that we use for the whole uh, Winet. But under this Winet, we have different subnets for each components in the lab. We have a different unique subnet for DMZ. We have a separate uh, subnet for Bastion service. We have separate subnet for the van part, management traffic, and all of that. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is Bastion service? I'm not sure if you guys have used uh, cloud computing before. But when you deploy a new virtual machine in the cloud, it gives you a public IP addresses for you to access that machine. From security perspective and best practices, that's not a good thing because we don't want to expose our machines to the internet without any protection in the middle. We don't want to, let's say, expose RDP to the internet or SSH to the internet without any protections in place. So what this Bastion series actually do is actually going to help us a lot in that way. We no longer need to assign public IP addresses to any of the resources here, specifically these VMs that you can see. We have, I have applied private IP address to these VMs only. And if I want to manage these VMs remotely from my own computer remotely, all I have to do is to use Bastion service. And it's a service that's accessible from the portal of Azure itself. So if I want to RDP to this server, I'm not going to RDP from my own machine, okay? Like this one, typing the IP address and all of that. I'm not going to do that. The Bastion service is actually going to allow me to do that from the Microsoft portal at, uh, as well. So what we're trying to achieve here, uh, as you can see, we have these VMs here. Uh, we will create these VMs together. And after we create that, we want to make sure that the, all the traffic to the internet from this VM goes through this router here, this gateway. This is the gateway, as you can see. This IP address here, as you can see, 10.1.200.1 is going to be the gateway for these VMs. And when the traffic comes from here, here from these machines to this gateway, it's going to flow through this firewall. 
I have to configure this routing table in Azure in a way that sends all the traffic that are coming from these servers to this firewall, okay? And the good thing is the firewall will inspect the traffic and make sure that all the traffic outbound to the internet is secured. It's all good. In a different scenario, when I mentioned that I want to expose these VMs to the internet and perform some brute force, the way it works is the brute force attack is going to happen from my own machine computer, the desktop that you can see. And I'm going to generate these attacks from the internet and the traffic comes like this uh, in Azure Cloud to the RAN network, to the firewall, to this device, and all the way to this VM here, all right? So that's the thing. What I want to do, I want to control the traffic in a way that all the inbound and outbound traffic goes through and flows through the firewall. That's the ultimate goal. That way I can protect these servers, okay? I can see what's happening inside the packets. I can implement IPS, IDS, any sort of security features on this firewall alone. That way I have visibility and security. And the end goal is once I gathered enough logs here, I want to send all the logs to Sentinel, a SIEM tool in Azure. And that way we are going to do incident response, create alerts and all of that. Hope that makes sense. If you don't understand, if you have any questions, make sure to comment below. I'm happy to provide the answers to those questions, okay? So with that being said, let's get this done in Azure.